You know, one of the ways that we celebrate our victories, and this is biblical, is when you've had a victory, to not only celebrate and do something fun that you want to do, but to go help somebody else that has less than you. Two quick examples. In Nehemiah, wonderful. Nehemiah is a wonderful book. You, man, there's such a lesson in there about how Nehemiah wanted to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem so the people would be protected. And he went and got permission from the king to rebuild the wall, and he started a bunch of other people to help him. And as soon as he wanted to do something good, the enemy started coming against him. I mean, just thing after thing after thing, and I don't know how long it took him, but this just went on and on. And the more he did, the madder the enemy got, and the more they came against him. And he just kept praying and working, praying and working, praying and working, praying and working. And finally, the wall was built. And in Nehemiah 8.10, after the wall was built, it says, then Ezra told them, go your way, I love this, eat the fat, drink the sweet. I guess they didn't have anything against fat or sugar, they said. <laughs> I mean, you can do it in excess, but I thought that was kind of cool. I thought, yay, now I have permission to go eat what I want to tomorrow. Eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and be not grieved and depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So they were commanded to not only celebrate the victory they had, but to send portions of the food that they had and blessings to somebody else who had less than them. It takes a while in our lives to get this, but I can tell you something. One of the highest forms of spiritual warfare that you can do is to be a blessing to other people, especially when you don't feel like it. The story of Esther is the same thing. Wicked Haman had a plot to destroy all of God's people, but God wanted to use Esther to do something about it. At first, she was not just all over that idea. I'm sure she had plans for her life and she had some fear and her uncle said to her, how do you know but that you were called for such a time as this? And if you don't do what God's asking you to do, he will raise up somebody else to do it. And I believe there's a lot of people that are called for such a time as this. I don't believe that we're alive in this day and hour by accident because we just happen to show up on planet Earth when things are so bad out in the world. I believe that we are chosen by God to live in this time frame and it, that we have a purpose and God has a plan and he expects every one of us to help him in whatever way that we can to get as many people as we can on board for Jesus because he comes back before he comes back and a lot of people get lost. And I won't go over the whole thing, but it's the same thing. After they had their victory, they set aside two days that they had to celebrate every single year to remember the victory God had given them. And one of the things he told them is this is a day of feasting and gladness a holiday and a time for you to send gifts to the poor and portions to one another. I want to tell you something. I, I don't have time to stand up here and just harp on this all night tonight. I teach on it a lot, but you can't be selfish and happy. You can't be. The best thing you can do for yourself is do as much for somebody else as you possibly can. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to tell you one quick story and I'm going to give you a challenge. God wants to use you. And he doesn't just want to use you with your Christian friends and the people you like. He wants to use you with your enemies. And he wants to use you with people that you don't even know. And I want to tell you something. Life gets so exciting if you go out every day and you're just a little Holy Ghost spy for God. Every day can get exciting you won't have to lay down with all your problems anymore and be depressed and in prostration. You can get up and say, God, what are we going to do today? And it may be something teeny tiny. It may be something big, but you will have a fulfillment that you cannot even imagine. 